Hey everybody, it's Triple L, and now, hey, it's a new season of anime, new anime are coming up. There's gonna be a lot that I'll try to cover for this first week, and uh, we're starting with Black Clover. So if you follow the channel, you'll, you'll have seen that I previously made a Black Clover video, uh, pretty much selling it to you guys, and, you know, I sold it to you guys, so, like, how could I not also watch this with you? Like, if this turns into the, the most terrible viewing experience in the world, I'm gonna be right there with you guys, we're gonna take it together. And it's just going to be a fun time because at the very least we can laugh about how bad things are. You know, that's that's the general impression, but uh, that's the worst case scenario. Like, ideally, I'm coming into this with the hopes that uh, it'll just be a fun thing to watch. Now, guys, I'm a believer in adaptive expectations, meaning that I will switch my expectations depending on the show that I am watching. There is tiers of shows that I have explored in uh, my time watching anime and whatnot. And uh, this is important because when it comes to the anime that I end up talking about on the channel, the ones that I have the least fun with are the ones that I can't really find things to talk about. And the ones that I have a lot of fun with are the ones that overload you with themes that you can actually discuss with the uh, with the commenters and talk about the various themes. Um, that's where the fun is for me when I am talking about anime videos. Because of that, however, and because I know what Black Clover is about, I am not expecting there to be a lot for me to talk about after a certain point with Black Clover because it's a simplistic series, it's a simplistic narrative. And uh, you might have seen that already like popping up in the episode, like it's a very simple narrative in the episode and uh, we'll be talking about that as we go into it. But I just want to set up the expectations here for these videos. It's going to be about uh, pretty much talking about what Black Clover does right and uh, what worked well in the episode because Black Clover has some flaws or some elements that are most most people see as a really bad flaw. Uh, there's no point beating a dead horse after the first time. So, you know, in, in these videos, I'm very curious to see like if Black Clover will actually inspire any kind of cool discussion from its episodes. That's really what I'm hoping for with Black Clover. And uh, there's actually other things that I'm hoping for with Black Clover, but it's more on a meta element for YouTube. I'll be making a video about that specifically, why I'm excited about Black Clover on YouTube. Uh, well, because it's going to be funny. But uh, yeah, so this episode, let's talk about it. I'm just letting you know, uh, there's the possibility that I might miss weeks just because it's kind of hard to actually uh, make these videos continuously every week. Uh, some days are busier than others, um, but uh, I will try to be here for the majority of the Black Clover episodes. So if you guys like the episodes and you want to keep hearing my insights on it, uh, you know, jump into the videos. Uh, I'll try to make these come up within the day or the day after that Black Clover happens. Anyway, let's get into the video and uh, I want to clear up another point. In the preview video that I did for Black Clover, I kind of mentioned this and uh, I mentioned how the worst or the hardest factor for a lot of people for Black Clover is going to be the main character. Um, and because of that, a lot of people are going to say that the series is gunk, that it it's a waste of time and whatnot. But here's the thing, all right? If you liked this episode, if you liked the plot, if you liked the earnestness of the characters, if you liked the rival, if you liked Asta for some reason, I don't know, uh, that sounded mean, but if you liked Asta, if any of the characters were able to like get you like slightly invested in their style, if there was something in this episode that you really enjoyed, don't let anyone take that away from you. Because I know that already the reaction for this series is not the best. And like just flat out, I'll tell you, we know that among anime viewers, uh, they do not like the series. It was voted, I think, the worst in Comic Con 2016 or something, the worst new manga series. Listen, um, those viewers are jaded. Those opinions are only relevant to people who have been watching anime for a very long time. If you are a new viewer, you're less likely to have the same complaints that those people are gonna have. So if you enjoy this series, keep enjoying it. Like, why would you take that away? If something's making you chuckle, if something's making you a little bit happy, or something's like, chilling you out just a little bit, it's worth the watch for you at that point. Like, it's your stress relief. If it makes you stressed, however, like, obviously, go, go away. But if you're enjoying it on some level, look, man, it's it's a hobby. It's just, it's all right. So um, I, I would, however, recommend that 
if you do like this series, you be very careful where you say that because depending on where you are, you might get crucified for it. Because how dare you like something that a lot of other people don't like? Oh, whatever, man. Anyway, uh, let's get into this episode. So with that stipulation, I'm not gonna lie, I was coming into this episode with uh, not great expectations. Like I remember how annoyed I got at Asta in the first couple of chapters and I thought, oh great, like, you know, Asta is not good in long doses. He's one of those main characters that you do not want on the screen for too long because he's just gonna end up chewing the scenery, he's just gonna end up repeating the same rhetoric over and over, and it just gets kind of annoying, and even in this episode, you can kind of tell that it's kind of annoying because he's shouting all the time, but, you know, going into the episode, I was actually pleasantly surprised. I really liked that. I thought that was, I thought that was good. I really enjoyed that episode, actually. I thought it was, it was pleasant, and the thing here is that uh, Asta was not that big of a deal. I actually, like, thought, once we got past the first little bit of it, I didn't think Asta was that big of a deal. Once we got past Asta's thing with the nun at the beginning, it was like, all right, I'm okay with this. And I went back to the manga and what ended up happening here, and this is like, good move on the anime adaptation. They moved around some of the scenes and what that ends up doing is that it makes Asta more bearable because you're not having to see him as much as the manga was having you see him. Uh, they, they split it up over two episodes, they rearranged the scenes, they made it a lot more bearable. Um, if they cut down on his rhetoric and not have him repeat it so often, you know, I think that'll be great because I don't need to hear the same message five times over. But uh, in terms of the anime adaptation, that's, uh, that's a lot nicer. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And uh, so that's props. I did not think that this studio was going to be able to like actually rearrange it in such a way that makes it a lot more bearable. And uh, one thing about it too, and this is going back to the art and so are going to the art and animation. The art and animation is really pretty. It's a very pretty show, but uh, I like the color palette. The color palette ends up doing something really cool because if you look at the color palette, the colors are kind of muted. They're not as vibrant as say Shokeki no Soma, and because of that. Uh, it makes things feel a lot more down to earth. It makes things feel a lot more rustic. It makes things feel a lot more earnest. And if there was a word that I would describe in this episode, it's it's the earnestness that's presented within here. Um, I really like it. I think if there was one thing that Black Clover tended to do well, was uh, it, it, it could hit on some emotional points or it could make a very down to earth thing. And I kind of, it came through with the episode just a little bit. Now I have a few notes here, so uh, let's go through it. Let's talk about the episode. Um, in terms of construction of the episode, you can tell it's a hard introduction episode. There are certain lines and certain rhetorics that characters will say when it's the first episode of a series. Um, we get it with Yuno describing all of Asta's qualities, his immaturity, his shortness. Um, we get it in the way that people are giving off random exposition, even though no one normally talks that way. Uh, of course, that's not going to be a blow against the episode. Like All episodes have to do this to set up the world that they're in. But uh, there is the question of execution. Sometimes it's better than others. I mean, when you have a tiny little kid talking like he's like such a big know-it-all in the village, uh, berating Asta, it's like, all right, yeah, we, we need this exposition, but man, it's it's really annoying. Um, so when it comes to world building, the episode has good world building, uh, sorry, good world building, my words, versus bad world, uh, world building or annoying world building. Uh, the annoying world building being the way they set up the class discrimination. It's a very easy discrimination to make for a series uh, black clover really thrives on it it really committed to it uh, and, and with this one we can see it unfolding in the episode when we have the nobles attacking you know at the climax of that kind of uh, problem again it's so in your face that it makes for more annoying world building but then it had really good world building and it was uh with what they did with the magic at the beginning and this was actually really cool i really enjoyed this they opened up the episode on just like the two farmers right and once creating a magic hoe or controlling the hoe with magic and the other one's creating water and that was really cool because it started telling you about okay so magic is such an easy commodity of this world that people can just afford to use it for farming and all kinds of things like that they can just do it for their daily activities they can do it for their daily chores and then we got that with uh, uh, juno 
Sorry, I said Juno, it's Yuno. So we got that later on with Yuno, and it's like, all right, like that's that's neat, that's really neat. And then we had the girl in the uh, Grimoire library, and she was talking about my. I'll figure out what I want to do in the future when my Grimoire fits, uh, or sorry, fills out a little bit more, which talks about the people's culture with the Grimoires. In that, the Grimoires will start developing their spells, and then. Uh, when you have those spell selections, you can like think, oh, maybe I could do this or this at home. Maybe I can go work somewhere else. Maybe I could be a miner. I'm thinking that it's things like that because there was also the other little boy who said he could work in a shop. I thought that was really interesting. The idea that your magic decides or makes it easier for what you can do in the future. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, because this is a shonen, we're going to be focusing on the main character. And as we see in the end, the main character gets combat capable so we know where this is going but uh that was pretty cool that level of world building was awesome and actually speaking again about the beginning uh there was something that they did kind of differently here with the start and it's the first note i have on my notes it's uh that start was very adorable with the priest finding yuno and asta i thought that was very adorable it really amped up that heartwarming feeling or the earnestness of the scene of the series and i was just like yeah that that was nice it, it, it disarmed me it disarmed me really well and i really enjoyed that it was a very simple scene but uh, there was just something kind of adorable about the two kids and uh, the priest that took them in i i enjoyed that that was that was cool uh good on the episode that was a really great way to start i can't really um go past that anyway we were first talking about the narrative of the episode uh let's just uh let's see how to touch on this because uh, there's a few more notes here um yeah let's talk about the characters then go into the narrative because the narrative is using the characters so we get the introduction to yuno and asta now with asta it's like you know what they're doing you know like this character they establish him as the idiot hero that's the kind of archetype that they're playing with at or at least one of the aspects of his character and you know what better way to establish that the care that the hero is not smart than to have him propose to a nun all right man like i have a lot of issues with that because it's just it's 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 too easy that it's, it's it's so easy that it's lazy and it's just annoying because here's what happens when you have that situation happening it implies that he doesn't know about his religious system in the town and that he doesn't care enough to find out about the religious system in his town even though he apparently cares about this girl who is in the religious system in this town what's worse he's never had the idea to ask anyone about it and then when someone actually goes to educate him about it he doesn't listen so i assume this happens over and over so this is not a good quality like there's a purpose for it it, it wants to establish Asta's little routine. It wants to establish his humor. However, it paints him as overly ignorant. And we also get that with uh, how he keeps harassing the nun. And then the nun says she doesn't know what she was doing when she hits back at Asta. But it's like, no, I know what you were doing. You were defending yourself from someone who was harassing you. Uh, from the way Asta's jumping around, maybe he'll land and touch something he probably shouldn't. So... You know, that by far is the worst aspect of the episode. Um, that scene, that I just don't enjoy. It. And again, the implications that are set with Asta not knowing about his religious system and also setting up that he cares about this lady enough to propose to her. No, it's just, it's silly humor and I don't think it executes very well. Mind you, after that point, uh, things get better with Asta. You know, he's, he's still loud, but it, it gets better. Um, because then we have Juno, man, I keep saying Juno, Yuno, we, then we have Yuno involved. And Yuno, he seems like such a jerk in the episode, but that's not the character's fault. That's the fault of the writing. Um, all his words, we know that he's saying it because the narrative needs him to say it. The narrative needed him to make it seem like he's a jerk so that when the reveal comes that Yuno actually cares about Asta that it's a bigger deal. And truthfully, you could have seen that this was gonna be what was gonna happen when we have the flashback with the nun telling us when uh, Yuno came back with Asta beat up, he, he stopped crying because before that he was a crybaby. That was the indication that there was more to the character. But when you look at it you, you, and you ask just, you know, why would someone ever say not possible when his best friend just tells him that he's gonna be 
uh, the magic him or that he is the guy's rival. You know, in what normal world would someone say not possible in response to that as a direct response? Because you say immediately after it's like only in a story where you need to establish the narrative because that moment paints it as a really bad situation when in actuality it, he meant that no, it's not possible that this kid did not get a grimoire. And so we see him uh, talking to Asta later on. Uh, Yuno is a pretty, actually no, he is a really great shonen rival because he actually cares about his rival. He's actually best friends with his rival. It's a healthy relationship. How could you not like that? So, you know, once Yuno gets involved in the episode, he counterbalances Asta pretty well, that Asta becomes more bearable. And also, this is not to take away from Asta, he's really strong. Asta is really strong and that's something that we can't take away from him. He goes out and he tries his best. He's doing his push-ups, he's doing his sit-ups, he's doing his standing push-up handstands. I, I don't know what to call that. You know, the kid's doing his best. Like, if anything, his physical progress should not be denied. Like, that was a product of hard work. Anyway, you know, that's the pre the like the basic setup is like we have the characters, we have the call to adventure, we have Yuno being attacked, and then we have Asta like f responding to the hero's call and getting something to reward his efforts, and he gets the black grimoire and just another little note I had for the grimoire. That's pretty cool. I really like the the grimoire. I like the animation for that sequence. It was pretty nice, and we have them fighting, or we have the episode split and then we're gonna have the fight in the next episode i would have loved to see the beat down in this episode but hey you can't get everything you want in one day right anywho the narrative was simple the most complex thing that they were doing there was you know uh pretending to be a dick just to get the viewers into that false sense of security and then r ramp it up and reveal like no you know's there for asta and then asta picks himself back up to deal with this guy and then the guy was also a plot device because how convenient is it to have someone who can measure the magic potential of a kid, right? Um, but it, it accomplishes a purpose. It's just you can tell what was happening and why it happened. And uh, with you know, you could definitely say that was very heavy handed because it's like you could say it's very heavy handed. It was it was a calculated effort to make that last moment better. But overall, though, um, I, I like the episode. I, again, I liked some aspects of the episode and the worst aspect for me was Asta, but I knew that going in. Otherwise, actually, yeah, even like the worst aspect of him was just like his first introductory scene where he was being overly loud. Like once he got past that, he was a lot more bearable. But uh, we'll have to see how this adaptation pulls it off. Again, the reason people won't like this series is because of the main character. How the anime manages the main character will change how people care about the series but otherwise the series is designed to have the most people like it and it's been succeeding about it well it's been succeeding at that in japan so statistics say or probability says it's probably gonna do really well in the western hemisphere when it comes to online viewing so you know i'm pretty excited guys you let me know down below what you thought of the series. Let me know what you thought of this episode. Uh, let me know if you are hopeful. Let me know if you are manga readers who are just also just wanting to see if the anime does it any better, that you could take it easier in the anime. Or uh, let me know why you dislike it. I'm okay with that. Like everyone's entitled to their opinion. And some people have some pretty good reasons for not liking Black Clover. Uh, I also want to hear about the people that do care about it too. Um, I'm very interested to see how what's going what's gonna to happen with Black Clover and how are people going to react to it. I'm really interested to see just the audience reception to Black Clover. Woo, but okay, this is a 20 minute video. It's okay because this is the first episode of the series. If you guys stuck to the end, man, thank you so much. I hope this, this was informative enough for you. It's really just my opinion, but uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it regardless. Guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, I hope you have a great day.